What's going on, mighty men and women of God? Happy Friday, man. It just seems like I'm starting to get habitual on these Friday uh, short vids, man. And, man, what a great weekend, man. Happy Good Friday. I'm just saying, man, this is the greatest weekend ever, man. All Out of all the holidays for me, this is it, man. This is Resurrection uh, Weekend. Jesus rises, man, and he makes a way for us um, to heaven. That last sacrifice up there, what God did for us on the cross, is second to none it is the reason why you and me will be able to make it to heaven because of his grace mercy and love for us and because that last sacrifice when jesus said it's done it is finished man and it's just like my tattoo i don't know if you can see it but it says right there it is finished, man. And you would think, you know, with Easter or with Resurrection Sunday coming up, that's what I'd be talking about, but it's not. I'm going to do a little about a 12-minute video, and these are the things that I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about um, unforgiveness. I'm going to talk about healing. I'm going to talk about demons. I'm going to talk about unforgiveness, and I'm going to talk about foolish faith, man, and how many faiths there are, because there's a three-part faith, man, that we need to understand where, where it is. Now... One of the things that are that has really been heavy on my heart, I tried to write this uh, post out, and it was it was daggone way this long, and then I was going to do a video on it this morning. God shut that down, and man, I, I was just listening to listening to some scripture, and God brought something to me. I was like, "Wow, man, you are so good." So I want to share this with you. Check this out. You know, I, I never come to you without bringing scripture to back up everything I said. Now, in Matthew chapter eighteen, verses thirty four and thirty five. It talks about the man that is that is sowing. I mean, that he owes the master ten thousand dollars, and he asks the master to forgive him. He finds it in his heart. He said, "Go about your way, man. You're all good." He turns the corner, and then he sees his dude that owes him a thousand bucks. Yokes him up by the throat. Yeah, man, he's like, "What up, man?" That master servant saw what he did. Went back and told him. Now the main the main guy, the main master, comes up and he yokes old boy up. He said, "You fool! I just forgave you, but yet you." can't do it and then Jesus said and Jesus is telling this story because it's all in, in red letters and Jesus was getting to, to this point because Jesus said listen to me man the point that I'm trying to tell you on this story and I'm going to read it to you real quick he said his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers until he should pay all that was due to him the main master delivered this, delivered the first of uh, the the, um, the guy to the torturers to torment him. And this is what Jesus said on verse 35. Watch this. So my heavenly father also will do to you if each of you from his heart does not forgive his brother of his trespasses. Now, this is really huge because the, the torturers, what he's talking about right there, who tortures us or torments us here on earth? It is demons, right? So if we have unforgiveness in our life and we need to, we got some healing to be done in our life and we have unforgiveness, guess what? Those demons are going to block the healing that you are praying for. That's not true. Well, oh yeah, let me back it up. When the woman in, in Luke chapter 10, uh, 13, verses 10 and 11, this is a woman that's been bent over for 18 years. Now, Luke, this is in Luke. Now, Luke is a doctor, and he's talking about this, but you've got to go back into the history and do a little bit of studying before you figure this out. But the woman had been going to the church and getting prayer. Nothing would happen. She went to the doctor. They gave her a shot. Nothing happened. She went back to the doctor again. They gave her some pills. <whistles> Nothing happened, man. She was no bueno. She was still bent over. Jesus shows up on the scene, sees old girl, and she's walking up, and Jesus called it out. He said, that spirit of infirmities, I command you to come up and out. Out! And that, and that demon come up and out of her, and she was instantly healed, right? So right there shows us that demons will block our healing, man. And I think we need to really wrap our mind around that and understand that God does want us to get healed, man. But sometimes there's uh, other little small things that we have to understand. Jesus said, my people will suffer for lack of knowledge. There is a lot of knowledge. There's a lot of nuggets in this Bible that we just skim right past and, and don't understand. And it's really huge to understand the unforgiveness and the demons will block the healing. A lot of people tell me this. Oh, but it's just timing. Maybe God is showing, waiting to prove something. Maybe so. And I hear a lot of people say this. Well, I'm going to get my healing in heaven. Well, that negates what, what Jesus did on the cross. 
He said that I died for I died for your sickness and health. And you know, and it, God may use it for whatever He chooses. But we need to eliminate everything that we possibly can and the words that we speak. We have word curses. Well, I have cancer. Bet the bank. You just speak, spoke death over your life, man, and said that you have cancer. So, yeah, the enemy's going to run just like he did with Job, and he's going to run straight up to God and say, hey, man, look, old boy said he's got cancer. God said, stamp him, man. I mean, because we have that much power in our tongues, man, and we need to understand that. Now, every time Jesus shows up on the scene, the, the there was one substance that always had to be there for the healing. And that was faith. All right. With faith, there are three types of faith. OK, we have generic faith. We have a, a amount of faith that God gives us. And then we have miracle having faith. Generic faith would be me and you getting on an airplane. We load up at Orlando Airport over here and we fly to Texas, right? We have faith that we're going to take off in that airplane and we're going to land in Texas and everything's going to be all good. That's generic faith, man. It just is what it is. That's the act of flying back and forth. We see it every day, right? And then God, the Bible says that God gives us, gives us all a portion of faith. This faith here is what we do with it, man. This is our day-to-day -day faith that we walk in, man. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews that it is impossible to please God without faith. So we need to have this faith, and we can grow our faith by reading this word and applying it to our life. And God will cause that stuff to grow. We we God will water it, but we have to walk and do the things that God has called us to do in the Great Commission and walking in life, reading our word, feeding our spirit, causing us to grow. Come on. But then there's this miracle having faith. What do you mean by that, Mark? Watch this. This is so cool, man. God showed me this today. And I've read this, man. <laughs> I mean, a hundred times, man. I've taught on it and everything else. Didn't really pay too much attention. And I've talked about miracle having faith. Most of the time, I use the example is that, you know, when when I was called to go to Orlando to the uh, uh, Orlando um, Regional Hospital, one of my buddies... Um, sister was on deathbed she'd been on the machine for 30 days they're gonna pull the plug and she was gonna die we'd go pray god raised her from the dead praise god and i said that's a miracle having faith you know i didn't i didn't waver and uh you know james said listen you can't waver when you're praying man don't pray one thing and then you believe in another man because that's that's double-mindedness right so we can't be double-minded this but here's miracle having faith watch what happened man so jesus just comes down from the hill he just did his sermon preaching on loving your uh, uh, loving and praying for your enemy like you do your neighbor. Because it's real easy, man, for us to go pray for our buddies and our family, but praying for the enemy, it's a whole different ballgame. And he's coming down, and th this Roman soldier, watch this, he's a centurion. Now he's way up there, and he gets Jews, gets the elders of the Jews to go ask Jesus if he would pray for his servant. Because him and his servant was tight, as his buddy man, he wanted to get healed. And what was really crazy about this is that the Jews and, and the Roman soldiers, they didn't click, man. It, it was just, it, it's always bam, bam, bam. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, he bowed, and he went to them to ask, and what was more crazy, they're like, we got you, bro. We're going to go talk to Jesus, man, because we also believe. Now, here's what it comes, and I want to read this, man, because this is pretty amazing. Watch this, it's, and I'll, I'll read it really quick. It says, now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him pleading with him saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. Tormented by what? Demons. Come on. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. Then the centurion answered and he said this, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. Now, you got to understand, now, Jesus is like, I got you, bro. And he's probably over here talking to Pete and them, but he continues to talk. Jesus is listening to him in his ears as he's, and you know, I can just see Jesus pondering, listening to this guy. I'm like, Jesus is probably like, what's this boy got? Now, you guys got to understand, God is the author of the beginning to the end, the alpha, the omega. Nothing gets past him during this time, man, of life. He knows what's going to happen. Except for, watch this. Watch these words, man. These words in the Bible are so. Is that fire? Watch this. He said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word and my servant will be healed. 
for I also am a man under authority, having, so having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go. And he goes, and to another, come here. And he comes, and to my servant, do this. And he does it, man. And he said, when Jesus heard it, he stopped. Listen, Jesus stopped. He looked, and he said, he marveled. Another word for marveled is amazed. Jesus was amazed. He goes, what'd you say, bro? What did you just say? And he said, listen, assuredly, this is what Jesus said to the dude. He said, assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. Man, I'm trying to tell you. Then Jesus said to the centurion, go your way, bro. Go ahead. I got you. And as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. What? His servant was healed right there because he believed. That is called walking by faith, not by sight. That dude knew who Jesus was. It was like when Jesus turned to Peter, he goes, who do you say I am, man? He said, you're the Christ. You're the son of the most high king. He goes, yeah, you, you got this, bro. You, somebody told you this other than me because I didn't tell you this stuff. This centurion knew. He'd been watching what Jesus did. And he, Jesus said he was marveled. That's miracle having faith. There was no, listen, the Bible says that uh, the, the mustard seed of faith will move mountains. You know why that is? Is because that's all that mustard seed could hold is faith. No doubt and unbelief. So when you're praying, let there be no doubt and unbelief. Go in there knowing who you are, know who God said you are, because the Holy Spirit ain't changed. When Peter was there, man, his shadow was healing people. Come on. This is what I'm going to say right here. And this is the last thing I'll say. This is foolish faith right here. When Moses was leading the Israelites out of Egypt, and they're running, right? And they right behind him. Pharaoh and his people, they're right behind them. They come up to the Red Sea, they're going, and they come up. The Israelites look at, look at Moses, they're like, uh, <clears throat> what you going to do, dog? <laughs> Moses is like, I don't know. He said, God, what's good, baby? God said, put up a pump tent right here. Y'all sleep here tonight. He goes, what? Bro, we got people behind us. God said, do what I say. Come on. They went up and said, Moses, what are you going to do? He goes, bro, I don't know. All I got is a stick, man. That's all I got. But he waited. He waited till that, e that e Egyptian army come up. And what did Jesus do? Bam, he said, just touch the water. <laughs> Why? God wanted them to see what he was doing. The glory went to the king. When king self gets out of the way and that miracle having faith comes in, you're going to see miracles in your life. I'm here to tell you God is looking for somebody during this time right now to have foolish faith, man. To have miracle having faith, man. Faith that's going to amaze God. That, that Jesus said he amazed them with his faith. And that means to tell me that he didn't know that the old boy was going to do that. He was busy over there. God bless you guys, man. Listen. God's want to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than you can ever dream or think. It just takes the faith of a mustard seed, man. We slaying giants and moving mountains. God bless you guys. Happy Resurrection Weekend, man. Hey, and in three days, baby, in three days, baby, things are going to change. The king is risen, man. God bless you. I love you guys. Yeah.